With the release of the new Doom, I've decided I will do another rant video and this time it's gonna be about entire game industry. These are mostly my own opinions and thoughts based on a couple of decades of playing video games. I'm not sure if I will find the exact reason or reasons why the game industry won't pear shaped, but I'll try to. I'm not saying that every single new game is a piece of toss, but there are not many good ones either. So, let's plunge into this pathetic shit show called modern video games. Graphics is the most obvious and perhaps the only feature that evolves naturally and gets better and better with time, so I'm not gonna bash it too much in this video. On since the graphics is the least crappy part of all new games, I'll start with that. Hardware, in this case graphics cards, are getting better, faster, with more features and higher resolution. In the old days the standard was VGA resolution, which is way too low compared to 4K or even HD. Old games may look rather crude compared to new ones, but they have certain qualities that new games lack. Take for example character's movement. I've got two examples for you, dear viewer. Don't pay attention to the graphics right now, but watch closely how these characters move. Fast forward 16 years, and we've got this. So, what brought us 16 years of progress in this case? In Virtual Fighter 2, characters move like, like real actual people in terms of movement fidelity and also in terms of movement speed. Used motion capture made it look almost perfect, however, last iteration of Virtual Fighter somehow cocked it up to the point it's practically unplayable. Also, they look bloody weird, look at his arms. Yeah, these rectangles look anything but natural, but still, it's somehow more appealing than this. Maybe I am the one who's weird, but seriously, those of you who play both games, which one is more appealing to you? Second example is an old hand-drawn platformer from 1992 everybody knows, Flashback. Even though the game is 30 years old and the character is hand-drawn, it always makes me wonder how did they do it? How is it possible that the character moves like a real person? And now, let's have a look at Flashback Remake. Sure, the game is in higher resolution so it's more detailed than the original, but when I compare just the character's movement, the old original has clearly the upper edge. How is it possible that hand-drawn characters in older games can move much better than characters made in recent years? And since the graphics is the most obvious feature in games, developers are focusing more on the graphics instead of gameplay or storytelling. Take Doom for example. I'm not saying that Doom has some kind of super elaborate story, but it was something new and groundbreaking at the time of its arrival. What has changed since? What can modern 3D shooters offer that Doom could not? Graphics and mouse look. That's not much of a progress, is it? It's still the same concept more than 25 years old, only set in a different environment with different weapons and different targets to shoot. There are some exceptions of course, like System Shock or Mass Effect for instance, but other than that, most of modern 3D shooters are practically the same thing with no new ideas. Not every game needs a story, but in those that do, I don't want to hear the same story over and over and over again no matter how good the story is. On this exactly what today's games do. They either tell the same successful story that has been told many times before and is kinda safe to tell, or they just tell the new one which is most of the time pretty much shit. Again, I'm not saying that every new game is crap or that every old game is perfect, but unfortunately games are getting worse and worse by the year. Games like Chrono Trigger, Bioforge or Shenmue, even though action-oriented, tell compelling, interesting and great story while maintaining high level of fun. They can hardly be said about most of the modern games. Gameplay has been dumped down to the point where you don't play the game anymore, because the bloody games hold your hand from the beginning to end. 
You don't need to aim in 3D shooters anymore. There's an aim assist. You don't need to figure out what to do next in an adventure game. Game practically tells you what to do. You don't need to find the right path in an RPG, because you can't stray from the path anymore. And you don't even need to be online while playing online game. Just turn the auto mode on, and that's it. And I ask myself, who are these games for? I want to put some effort into the game, so I can feel some sense of accomplishment completing the game. I don't want the game to do everything for me, or watch some sort of interactive movie. Music used to be a big part of video games. I said used to be, because in today's games the music is either utterly unimportant to developers, or they hire useless composers. Why is it you can remember the music from 25 years old games like, for example, Doom or Final Fantasy? But you can't tell the difference between music in today's games. Till this day, I still remember the moment when I connected Sega Mega Drive to my telly for the first time, inserted the cartridge with Street of Rage 2, and saw the bloody intro for the first time. The intro is basically one picture scrolling down the screen with some background story about a syndicate boss called Mr. X. The intro was extremely simple, but they included sick music and it just made it work. Music in games is mostly without any lyrics, except for maybe opening and ending credits. Out of curiosity and for the sake of this video, I did a little research on last year's pop music chart. Even though I don't listen to pop music, I just wanted to know what's currently popular and how the pop music changed in the last 20 years or so. I picked first and second most popular song. What I've discovered was quite disturbing. The word salad and the lyrical vomit you have to endure while listening to modern music is unbearable. I'm not even sure if music is the right word to describe what I heard. Two thirds of this music are generated by some very crappy AI and the rest is pulled out of somebody's ass. On the clips themselves, they are simply atrocious. If I wanted to torture someone, this would be the first thing I'd use, playing it over and over and over again. Unfortunately, I can't include that shit in this video, but for those who want to listen to that, I'll put the links in the description. What's the reason modern games suck, you ask then? I reckon there are a couple of reasons. Big companies don't want to take risks and create anything new that would possibly hurt their profit. So they play kinda safe by creating sequels, remakes, reboots, re-whatever. We have become a recycle society, reusing old ideas to create profit because it's easiest way to do that. Like this, they don't need to come up with a new story, new characters, new music, or even their own engine. They just buy an existing one, usually Unreal Engine, because it's cheap. Put in some textures, voiceovers, and the game's done. Lots of developers are focusing on mobile devices, which has become the most popular gaming platform, and that's where the money is. Of course, the mobile gaming is full of bloody remakes to squeeze as much money as possible out of them. Since controls are pretty much non-existent there, these games have to be made as dumb as possible. Let me show you one example. Do you still remember Ragnarok Online? In my opinion, one of the best online games ever made. It was remade for mobile devices a couple of years ago. The original game was made for Windows with keyboard and mouse in mind, so it had to be somehow dumped down for mobile devices. It's quite obvious they had to do that to make it work in this environment. It of course made the game less appealing for serious gamers. But what made it utter rubbish was automatic mode, which makes your character run around the map and killing monsters without even looking at the screen. And lastly, in-game purchases. These games are made primarily for lazy people who don't want to put an effort into the game and take the easiest way to win – money. It has become quite popular lately, not to hire people based on merit, but rather based on skin color, gender or political views. It's no longer important how good the person is for the job. What is more important is diversity of the employees. And of course, more victim boxes the person gets to tick, the more valuable he or she is for the company. Maybe all creative people just stopped creating and left the industry for dead to wankers who can't create shit to tossers who are driven by their political agenda rather than creativity. 
There are no new ideas in entertainment industry, and if there are, the final product ends up like this. Screen time is a internet kid taken to its sort of logical conclusion. As a youth, he was exposed to his grandfather's experimental internet gas, and that has patched him permanently into the World Wide Web. Internet gas. Really? What a massive spanner. This is the perfect example where we are. When I was a kid, picking up comics in the 90s and just feeling like they were too cool for me. Like I was intimidated by, you know, Night Thrasher who had a blade coming out of his wrist. Why would you hire a person who has no experience, who has no creative qualities, and who is literally afraid of the comic characters he's supposed to work on? And this is the outcome. Utter shite. Is it because we, as a society, hit the wall of creativity that there is nothing else to create or invent? Are we so empty and bland that it's impossible to create anything new? There are still people, however, they can create something new and interesting. But there are also people that are jealous of other people's success. And they get offended by anything and everything that's different from their own opinion. They usually start ringing and screeching that there is not enough POCs in the game, there's not enough gays and lesbos in the movie, etc. Unfortunately, game developers usually cave in to these retarded demands instead of sending these twats a big fuck you. And there you have it, dear viewer. This was my take on today's game industry. Let me know what you reckon in the comments. Stay safe and catch you next time.